A homogeneous linear system is a special type of linear system where all the constant terms are zero. So a linear system of equations is homogeneous if it looks like this. You can see on the right side, all of the constants are zero. The homogeneous system I've written here consists of m equations in n unknowns. The n unknowns, of course, are x1, x2, all the way up through xn. And just for an example of the notation, a22, for example, is the coefficient in the second equation corresponding to the second unknown, x2. A homogeneous linear system can also be written like this with the coefficient matrix multiplied by the solution vector equals the zero vector, which we can write more compactly as ax equals zero. Let's talk a bit about the types of solutions there are to homogeneous linear systems, and then we'll go through three examples of solving such a system. Firstly, thanks to the simplicity of a homogeneous linear system, all of the constants are zero, it's easy to see that every homogeneous linear system is consistent. We can set all of the unknowns equal to zero, and that will certainly be a solution to the system. This is called the trivial solution. You can imagine if we just set all of these unknowns here in this vector equal to zero, the multiplication would just result in the zero vector. So it is a solution to the equation. It's the trivial solution. The case where our homogeneous linear system has two unknowns is easy to sketch because those are lines right? We've got an X and a Y, two unknowns, so we're talking about lines. This is what the trivial solution looks like in that case. We've got two unknowns, A1X plus B1Y equals zero, and then this other equation, A2X plus B2Y equals zero. The trivial solution is where these lines intersect at the origin. Because the constant terms are zero, the y-intercepts of both lines are zero. If we set X and Y equal to zero, we get a solution. The only other possibility is that there are infinitely many solutions if the lines exactly coincide. Of course, the only way to get there to be no solution would be if the constant term was not zero. That way we could shift one of these lines up, but then we wouldn't be talking about a homogeneous linear system because the constants gotta be zero. And this is the case for any homogeneous linear system, even if it has more than two unknowns, they will always either have only the trivial solution or infinitely many solutions. For a homogeneous linear system of equations, these are the only two possibilities. There is one situation where it's very easy to see that a homogeneous linear system will have infinitely many solutions, which is if the system has more unknowns than equations. In terms of the letters we were using before, we had a linear system with m equations and n unknowns. So if m is less than n, if we have fewer equations, equations than unknowns, then for sure our linear system is going to have infinitely many solutions. In these cases where there's more unknowns than there are equations, like for example, maybe there's two equations in four unknowns, two equations is not enough to determine the values of four unknowns, and so that would leave at least one free variable giving us infinitely many solutions. Let's finish with a few examples from Howard Anton's Linear Algebra textbook. Link in the description if you want to buy the book. It's great. In these first two exercises, we want to determine whether the homogeneous system has non-trivial solutions by inspection, which means we should just be able to look and figure out if it has non-trivial solutions or not. Let's look at 13. Here we have three equations. We might say m equals three. However, we have four unknowns, x1 through x4. So since we have more unknowns than we have equations, it's guaranteed that this homogeneous linear system will have infinitely many solutions. In equation 14, on the other hand, we've got a homogeneous linear system. It's homogeneous because all of the constants are zeros, and we see that it has three 
equations, and it has three unknowns, so we can't immediately say that there are infinitely many solutions. Just because the number of equations and variables are the same here doesn't mean that this linear system for sure only has the trivial solution. However, it is pretty easy for us to check that indeed it does only have the trivial solution. Starting with this last equation, 4x3 equals 0, that implies that x3 equals 0. But then if we plug that into the second equation, that means that x2 minus 0 equals 0, which of course means that x2 equals 0. But then if we plug x3 equals 0 and x2 equals 0 into the first equation, we get that x1 also equals 0. So while exercise 13 had infinitely many solutions, exercise 14, we only have the trivial solution to this homogeneous linear system. And I guess I did break the rules by writing some stuff down, but that's just for clarity. It's very easy to do these without writing any of this down. And since the system in exercise 13 has infinitely many solutions, if you were to perform Gauss-Jordan elimination on the augmented matrix for the system, you would end up finding that you have at least one free variable, which indicates there are infinitely many solutions. Let's do one more example. Here is another homogeneous system of linear equations. Let's go through the process of solving it, and we'll basically use Gaussian elimination to do this. Link in the description to my lessons on Gaussian elimination and Gauss-Jordan elimination if you need a recap. This matrix here is the coefficient matrix for the system. Now, I've chosen not to include the constants in the matrix because no matter what operations we perform, the column containing the constants is still going to be all zeros. That's just a characteristic of homogeneous linear systems. That last constant column will be all zeros. So it's not really necessary to include it. So we'll just work with the coefficients and be sure to remember that our constants are not here when we get to the end. My first step is going to be swapping rows one and rows two. That way I get a leading entry of one at the top. We could have also multiplied row one by a half but I'm trying to avoid fractions to keep our solution nice and clean. Swapping rows one and two gets us here, at which point we can subtract two copies of row one from row two in order to turn this entry below the leading one to a zero. We, of course, also have to subtract four from one, which gives us that negative three. Now, to turn this entry into a one, we can multiply row two by negative one third, which isn't actually going to introduce any fractions because that, of course, plays is nice with this other entry as well. Multiplying row two by negative one third gets us to this matrix here. Now we can simply subtract row two from row three in order to turn this one into a zero. So we do row three minus row two, that gets a zero there, and then one minus negative one is positive two. Now we can write the system of equations that's represented by this coefficient matrix. It's not quite in row echelon form technically, because we have a two here instead of a one, but it's pretty darn close and the system is easy to solve now. This is the homogeneous linear system that we've got now. Remember, this matrix represents coefficients, the constants are all zero. And it's fairly quick to see that the trivial solution is the only solution to this linear system. 2x3 equals zero means that x3 equals zero. Plugging that into this equation gives x2 equals zero. And then plugging x2 equals zero into the first equation gives x1 equals zero. So in this case, we only had the trivial solution. I'll also point out that the number of equations and the number of unknowns in this system were both three. So we wouldn't have been able to know from the jump that there are, say, infinitely many solutions. In this case, there turned out to be only one. And that's a bit of an intro to homogeneous linear systems. A homogeneous linear system of equations is a linear system of equations where the constant terms are all zero. Again, you know that a homogeneous linear system will have infinitely many solutions if it has more unknowns than equations. And we'll prove that next time, link in the description. But keep in mind, it's also possible with the same number of equations and unknowns to have infinitely many solutions. But a 
homogeneous linear system will either have infinitely many solutions or only the trivial solution of all zeros. Let me know in the comments if you had any questions, and if you find these linear algebra videos helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon. Link in the description. It's a huge help. Thanks for watching.